Okay, we're gonna get started on our little project. So, good evening, guys. I'm uh, Clyde with PT3D, and today we are going to play with concrete and uh, see if we can get something to actually mold. Like, as in, you know, pour it into a mold. Not actually get it to mold, because that would just be really weird. Unless I was doing some kind of strange bacterial cultures or something. Growing my own yeast, there you go. <sighs> okay. Let's see what we got going on here. This is the first time I've ever done this. Good evening, Mr. Vince, how are you today? Sorry, I'm trying to pull up the chat on the other screen so I don't miss it, because last time it was horrible trying to watch it on here. Let's see if I can get it to pull up. All right, I have the chat. So a very fine evening to you, sir. Oh my goodness, I gotta turn off my notifications on this computer. It's crazy. Oh my god. Okay, I think I can actually see things now. Yes, I can now officially see the chat. That is good. Um, I apologize for the weird lighting. I got this light up here. I got this light right here. And this light right here is going to be doing most of the work. But unfortunately, it's going to cause the screen to do weird things. But don't worry. We will be facing right here in a moment. So first, I'm going to bring you over here, and I'm going to do something that I don't really like to do. I'm going to bring the chair over here, because that way you guys can get a little closer to what I'm doing, and so I can actually see you. So today, I finished the mold. This is my coaster mold. I have a spoon. I have an empty cup. And I have two things of water. So we're kind of getting excited. I want to try this. I've been wanting to do this for months now. And I finally got some of this uh, quick read. So I'm going to pull the zippies off here. It's says pull. I can't even get my fingernail in there. Luckily, we have our handy dandy snippers because snippers always work. They work for everything. Everything. We're moving. Tough to get tabs. They seem to be like a, they're almost like a Leatherman. Duh. Okay, that's out of the way. So, we don't need a huge amount of concrete. Oh. We just need a little bit. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, man, this is going to be dusty. Hold on. i got to stand up so I can see what's going on here. Oh, pta. Have the bag of the concrete. It is very, very dusty. Like exceedingly dusty. And I got the fan on. I think I'm gonna have to uh, change the fan's direction temporarily while we do this because I really don't want a whole bunch of concrete everywhere. Get my knife. I should probably have brought a, a damp towel. And I've never bought concrete in this particular uh, style before, so this will be new for me. Oh, I think we're gonna do the uh, stupid thing. Cause you know me, I like to do dumb things while I'm on streaming. 
There we go. Get that bag pushed down. All that just to get a cup of concrete. Alright, that should be sufficient. Now we're going to try and carefully put the lid back on. So as to keep as much moisture out of this as humanly possible. Okay. And to the people at Quickery, you need to make a bag that fits the diameter of the bucket. That way I don't have to cut the bag open. Just saying. Alright, so we have one more thing I gotta grab. Which is right here. I don't know if it's entirely necessary. But this is my release spray. This is a uh, universal release. So I'm going to prep my mold with this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, all right, let's uh, okay, so here's the here's the mold. Can you see the mold? Okay, you can see the mold. I'm gonna swap the camera around. There you go. And I'm going to move my stuff around. And I'm going to tilt down here. So as you can see. <coughs> Yuck. Alright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the spray. And I'm going to spray the mold. I probably shouldn't breathe it in, so... Sort of held my breath. Phew! Alright, now. Get our tools out of the way. Move this over here. That's a lot of concrete. That is way more than I need for that. But that's okay. But I believe you're supposed to add the concrete to the water. But. This is the way I'm doing it. So I'm just going to take this spoon and I'm going to push it around in the cup. I know this is so fascinating. Watch, I'm making concrete. on the bottom I gotta get. There we go. I would laugh if I got the consistency I wanted on the first try because I, like I said, I have never done this and it would be so funny but I actually think I have achieved the texture I want. Wow, that is that is awesome. Sweetness. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, really good stuff. Now there is another thing I can do. Um, so we're gonna. Alright, so yeah, that's perfect. I mean, I couldn't have gotten that better if I had actually known what I was doing. So, there's a few products that you can get, like, that may or may not help you out. Um, stir sticks for paint are always great if you're doing, like, large batches of something. And you can actually break them up. 
Um, this is a product called Flow Control um, from Rapid Set. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to do, but I'm not. This is a very small batch, so I'm not going to bother using this. Um, it's supposed to help increase fluidity and increase compressive strength. So I'm not going to use that this time around. We'll probably work with that in the future. I also picked up uh, some uh, pigment. This is the, I got a terracotta and a black, because concrete dries kind of, I don't know, beige or whatever. So these are two products that I am going to play with in the very new future, but for today, I'm going to just use straight up concrete. Oh, oh, I stopped moving it, so now it's starting to stiffen up on me. So this is what happens, I started talking. All right, so yes, don't let the concrete stop moving or it will start hardening on you. All right, so I've lost my consistency just a tiny bit, so. Yeah, a little bit of water to that so we can try to revitalize it. This is probably gonna end up being too soupy now. Oops, okay, so note to self, don't stop to gab at the camera when you have a perfect consistency. That's just silly. So, I may, it's a little bit watery, but I think I can work with it. Actually, probably ought to use it a little bit watery because of my, uh, the stuff I got going on in here. So, let's bring this over here so you can see it. And we are going to just kind of dab this in and kind of roll it around the part that's got the image on it. I want to make sure that that's good and covered. Get one more scoop in there. And then we're going to... going to flop that. Yeah, is to get it to kind of sit in all the corners. And I would like to vibrate this to get some bubbles out of it, but... <laughs> I just flipped concrete everywhere. That's awesome. All right, so we didn't mean to do that, but we did it, so now it's done. We're going to use the spoon to push some of the stuff around a little bit. One more little scoopy. And I should definitely do something a little different. All right, so. My table is not level, apparently could be problematic so we are going to <clears throat> have to address that later So it's not perfect, unfortunately, because <clears throat> my table is not level. I did not realize it was quite that out of level, but I will have to bring that back at some point. But for now, we are gonna leave this the way it is, and we're going to take some of our water, and we're going to try to save our spoon. I know, it sounds probably silly, but I don't want to waste my spoon. I'm also going to try and save this cup. 
so that way I only have one cup that's uh, in need of being tossed. And thankfully, I did use most of the uh, concrete. So, so I don't feel too horrible about my wasting of too much materials. Alright, <clears throat> so this is a little bit dirty still. But, I do have this paper towel that I could probably use. So I'm a little bummed that my table wasn't level. I really wish it was. Because if it had been level, this would have been a lot easier. But it's not. So, we're going to let this sit. And I think we're going to flip the camera around again. So let's do that. Okay, so what else is going on today and this week? Oh, let's get rid of the chairs. They're in the way. Um, we did some testing of a mold, sort of. Um, I think I briefly mentioned it the other day. Um, what I did is I created a, mo a mold system like this that I can put <clears throat> walls on like this and then I can put my part which is the one you're looking at now this one I can put that in here and then so you can see that I put it inside this and then I can pour my uh, Umu 30, which is what I'm using for this run, into here. It's a little weak. It's not quite as uh, rigid as I was thinking it might be. So, it's too bad. Um, coffee cup lid. That should look familiar because pretty much most people that get coffee at the gas station probably get one of these. I used it to make a mold. It's right here. Um, but inside... That's my maker coin. So it's, I doubt it's a usable, uh, no, it's not. It's not a usable mold, but <clears throat> it was fun to play with. This one's really thin. I would probably like punch through. I mean, you can look just, you can almost see my skin on there. Look. Hello, sir, or Mr. Ron, how are you today? What else do we got? Okay, so we've also got an experiment I wanted to see what the texture would look like for these coasters because I really didn't want to mess things up. So if the surface texture is spread out enough, I wouldn't have to do anything special to the surface to release sweaty glasses of your frosty beverage of choice. So the idea is that when you put a cup on top of the coaster, when you lift the cup up, this stays put and it doesn't go riding around with it so um, it feels kind of like vinyl um, not exactly which kind of vinyl but that's kind of what it feels like but I mean you know what 3d prints feel like wow, my uh, camera is all wonky there we go so that's what I did there um, then I wanted to see how hard it would be to you know, pour this. This is free. I didn't put it in a mold or anything, so it's not really usable. But this is uh, the shape of a circle. Um, that circle is one of the coasters. So this is the circle that I casted. I wanted to see kind of how deep the uh, the groove was. I mean, I know how deep it was, but it's only one, one millimeter. But I still wanted to see how it would come out and translate into silicone. Or... Yeah, so this is tin cured silicone rubber. And what else? I think we did one other one. We did a we dropped this on my maker coin just to kind of see what it would do. Look, PT3D. Haha. <laughs> and it's cool because when I put it on the camera, you can actually well, I don't know if you can read it, but 
it actually looks correct to me right now looking at it. Whereas to you, it's probably backwards. So that is my experiment with the Umu. Um, I'm using the Umu 30, which had a six hour cure time. But it does have a pretty good working time, which is awesome. So, let's... all right, so yes, we're on. This is what I'm working on right now. This is concrete. And <clears throat> that is in the mold that I made, but my table, I just realized, is not level. I should have checked that beforehand. So it kind of sloughed off to the side a little bit. So this is not gonna be a usable coaster, but it will be good for doing prototyping. And there's my mud water that once the concrete settles, I will dump out. So it'll probably sit in here until tomorrow. And of course my pigment, which I will also be using at some point, but I don't want to waste it. Um, it turns out it's liquid. Sorry. It turns out that it's liquid and not um, a powder. I thought it was going to be a powder. And it was not a powder. I was very... Not bummed. Bum's not the word, but I was like, oh. So I may do some stuff with toothpicks, dragging it around the silicone. And I think that's just about it for tonight, because uh, <clears throat> I don't know how long this stuff takes. So let's take a look. Let's see. Right, let me get low once again. And then I'll set you guys up where I can take a look here. Let's see, make sure I didn't mess with anything. All right, we're still good. <clears throat> All right, so this is a quick setting. It says it sets in 10 to 20 minutes. <clears throat> Mold and sculpt to match contour of existing concrete, repair steps, curves, and walls. So, I guess what we could do is I guess we could wait another 20 minutes, and then we can go. So let's bookmark this. Uh, I have a Sharpie. I don't know what I did with it. Hold on. Sharpie. So we're going to say in 15 minutes at 10 o'clock, my time, Eastern Standard Time, we will, we will remove this. So, real quick, if you guys want to see a project that I just finished, I would be happy to show it to you. Let's go look. Gotta make sure I'm not disturbing anybody. So you guys, I don't know if you know it or remember, I said I was working on a project. Well, guess what? The project is done. This is the... see if I can get the there we go this is a kind of a memory plaque um, it's really hard to see the, the resolution because I've got the let's see if I can find the cable I got it oh excellent thank you Vince so what I can do is I can turn this down just a little bit there you go. So you can see that I uh, actually put the lithophane facing outward. And uh, like I said, this is a, a dimmable switch. So it's a dimmable LED. Um, and it's so cool because I mean, it's like it just works so well. And it's unfortunate that these cameras are so sensitive. But <clears throat> what I did was this is a three piece deal. So I've got the front plate, the middle plate, and the back plate. The back plate is screwed in on four posts using M5 screws. And um, this is all hand painted detail with uh, like kind of like your ship model paint or whatever. And thank you for that. 
Um, and I basically went around and I put a bezel into the, uh, or chamfer? I can't remember. Um, in Fusion 360, um, I used the uh, hex pattern to uh, make these look like bolts. I thought that would be a cool touch. Hand painted them with the uh, gold enamel paint. Um, this is actually a lacquer based uh, black. You can't really tell, but it's actually got a metallic flake in it to kind of give it that, I don't know, just that kind of that look. Um, I will say that uh, using lacquer and enamel together is a dangerous and risky game. Um, I didn't have any issues with this, thankfully, but I've been told that if you put lacquer on enamel, it will destroy the enamel. So I don't know. I have not experimented with that yet, but I believe that could happen. So, and I have that from a reliable source, aka my, my not father-in-law. <laughs> so... So, anyway, <clears throat> so yes, I thank you for the uh, the compliments on that. It was a, a labor of love. All right, back into our dungeon. <clears throat> now I can turn my fan back over here. Yes, um, we've got a few minutes. Ron, is that G Tech you're talking about? Sorry, just had to had to ask. Oh, whoopee. Oh, you know, hey, that's great. I think that's that's gonna work just fine. We're gonna we're gonna have a session now. I'm gonna try not to destroy things. Alright. So I'm sorry for sitting. But honestly. This is, uh, let's bring it down just a little bit because I don't want you guys getting that light up there. <sighs> we got, we still got 12 minutes. I'm kind of curious, I want to poke it. So when I poke it, a little bit of moisture either comes out of my skin or comes up from the bottom. So, oh, I left a fingerprint, so. All right, I'd say it's not ready yet. Oh, we can't time lapse this because it's real life now. Oh, that and that is awesome, Ron. I, that is very cool. I could try doing the the Google thing, but I don't really have time. I gotta get out of here shortly. It's Google Hangout. So flow control. Oh, look. They must market this in California because it's got a Prop 65 warning on it. Huh. Pretty much anything that has anything in it has a Prop 65 warning on it specifically for being sold in California. Because anything you buy that has anything in it could cause cancer. and or birth defects or other reproductive harm. Why you'd be eating this is beyond me though. Although I suppose if you're shaking it around. Huh. So maybe I'll get some of those little uh, <clears throat> dispensary bottles for that. So yeah, we got a bunch of things to do. Like 3D printing, painting, electronics, um, concrete molds so but yeah the uh, big thing about the uh, that memorial plaque is that it had so many different techniques in it that I've learned with you guys over the time that I've been you know doing my YouTube and uh, watching you guys and your YouTubes and you know it was a uh, dialing in the printer to get it to print good layers um, this project I did not use like a fill 
Um, I didn't do any sanding to it because this particular one I wanted people to know it was a 3D printed item. That way they could be like, ooh, that looks awesome. And that way the expectation isn't as, uh, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, don't even say that. That's horrible. Funny, but horrible. Sorry, I, I'm looking over there because that's where my, uh, my computer monitor is. So... Yeah, so we had the design part in Autodesk, or in Fusion 360, or no, yes, Fusion 360, and then we had the tweaking to make the model work, so I started with the top, I knew the thickness roughly that I wanted, and I knew the opening that I wanted, so I put in a relief, that way I could take the lithophane, that I had already exported at that particular size. And I made the opening like 0 0.04 millimeters larger. And it allowed for pretty much a friction fit with just, I mean, if you just poked it or whatever, it'd pop out, but. So yeah, playing with uh, the tolerances of PLA, that was something that uh, I took into this project. Um, supports. I did design this so I wouldn't have to use supports. Um, I wouldn't say I saved filament, but I probably did. Because if I had done that as a big giant honeycomb, it wouldn't have mattered. It would have just used a ton of filament, and that would have been bad. The internal frame is basically like, I think it was four millimeters wide on the frame. Um, that was, I think, not four millimeters. Was it? Maybe it was, I don't remember. But anyway, I made the grid like this. I had the square in the middle for the lithophane so I could attach the lights to it. And then I had to add arms to hold that frame inside the middle part. Or so, you know, the frame would sit in there. And then I had to add glue points. So I added some tabs inside to put the super glue on. Point two. Maybe I did 0.4. I don't know. So yeah, that'd be 0.2 on each each edge. So that could be. Maybe it wasn't 0.04. See, I should have written that down. But I did order some uh, journals. So I will be able to start making logs of the stuff that I'm doing, which will definitely be handy. Um, So yeah, the design process, thinking about where to glue things and assemble things. And then I realized that I didn't, I did front plate and the lithophane, I was fine with using uh, the uh, extreme power. Um, this is the, oh, I thought this was one of those Henry's ones or whatever that brand's called. Anyway, this is the uh, CA glue I used. Um, it did not have much in the way of working time. I do have the accelerant, and for whatever reason, uh, this thing set like that. I mean, snap my finger, the thing was like done. So I was like, okay, that's not so good. But <clears throat> I was, it was, it left an edge a little bit proud but nothing that I was like horribly like angry about. I was very happy with the end product. It looks like I've already got a couple of possible uh, customers coming out, which is good for me, good for business. I'm also hoping to get some customers for these as well, these coasters that I'm working on. Let's see, let's poke it. Poke it. Still a little soft, I think. Yeah, it's still a little clay-like, so. I don't know. It may have gone a little too wet. But it's all right. If I have to, I'll just not demold it today. I mean, I could try rapid setting it with a paper towel, but I think we want it to be exposed to air more than anything else. Let's see. Go ahead, my friend. Locked the concrete. Um, <clears throat> so other techniques that we we gleaned from this. So yeah, 
the design side, I realized the back plate needed to be removable in case something happened with the lights. Um, they will be problematic though because, uh, nope, nope, actually, no, that won't be problematic. I made sure that the, I made sure that the wires would be removable if somebody wanted to in the future. Um, you could probably swap it out with, uh, like a battery or whatever. So that's an option. Um, but yeah, four M5 bolts, like the Allen style, like these are the ones I think my leftovers from the FT5 built. So they were the short ones. Those things fit in like that thing had already been pre-tapped. So that was, that was fantastic. So what else? Um, I did the primering, which you guys know. I mean, that's like pretty much a standard if you're in a 3D print is you're going to like primer projects. So. Sorry, there, there definitely is some extra moisture in this. So I'm trying to kind of speed it up by pulling out as much of that moisture as I can. It has firmed up quite a bit, though. I mean, it's not going to be long, I don't think, but... Let's see. Blotty blot, 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 blot. I mean, if the mold is soft enough, I could probably demold this without damaging it. But I'm kind of concerned that if I go too early, it will. But it does say it sets in 10 to 20 minutes, so we still got another couple minutes to go. I mean, this is my first time doing this, so holy cow, it is still pretty wet. Alright, so let's see if we can see if it, is it squishy or not. No, well, that concrete's moving. So I think we're... <clears throat> Probably gonna have to just let this set overnight because, yeah, that's not looking great. So, I don't think it's gonna set that much in two minutes. You never know. I mean, it could just. Pew. I wanted to get it out of here so I could actually start drying it, but <clears throat> really concerned that if I uh, do this too quickly that uh, I will end up failing epically. So, I mean, I can, it's, it's stiff enough that I can peel the uh, edge of this away and it's not really mad about it, but it definitely still seems like it's uh, trying to break some of this off so maybe it won't bind. Yeah, that one's binding all right. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna end up mold or demolding this tonight because uh, it's not looking <coughs> promising. Yeah, I should have just gone and done this when I uh, had the opportunity instead of talking. <laughs> so my fault. <clears throat> but that's what prototyping is, right? Experimentation and figuring things out. So that's what we've done. And unfortunately, well, I don't know about unfortunately, because I think it'll still probably set in a manner that's usable. Uh-oh. <clears throat> My cup seems to be, I don't know, doing something strange. And my workbench is uh, <laughs> not really designed to handle strange. So we're gonna, I'm gonna leave that right there. And hopefully, uh, we'll leave it there. All right, guys. Well, it's 10 o'clock. I can't pull this. I'm really bummed. But 
it happens. So the rope lights before I get off here that I used for this project are awesome. These things are like tape. I mean, you can I mean you can really you can get a full 90 degrees on these if you really work them into the corner. So these are definitely something to consider. Um, I'm not gonna waste these, but my biggest problem with this is that <clears throat> it is almost as expensive to buy the power supply and the switch for these so I can actually make these functional again as it is to just uh, buy a new one of these. So this is actually, I think, three or four dollars more for the convenience of a dimmer switch and not having to do any wiring. So what I may do is I may start saving these because I've already got the lights from the CR10 that I had on the desk at one point. And I think I'll just start building a box for these and then we will figure out what to do with them. They're 12 volt, I think. 12 volt, maybe not 12 volt. I can tell you. <clears throat> I know they're too, I think they're too amp. But if it's something you guys are interested in, I can certainly post it. I'm looking right now. Do 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 do. So I'm actually thinking I may have to, I gotta order at least another two sets of these coming up. And at that point, it may actually end up being cheaper to buy the power supply and the switch because then I, but I don't know, we'll see. So this is the U-Stellar dimmable LED light strip. If you wanna follow along in your, on your stream, I'm gonna paste this right here. This is the one I used for this project. Um, and it worked very, very well. And I mean, I could also daisy chain a couple of these together and I should still have enough power. But yeah, these are uh, 12 volt. And I think, well, let me take a look here. It says 12 volt DC. Two amp is the power supply. So, twelve volt, two amp power supply, and these really do light up well. If I had a my gator clips here, which I may, let's go see if we have our gator clips here before we log off the stream here. Because if we do. love these boxes. If you don't have a box like this, you should get one. Everybody needs to have a box like this. This box has all kinds of other stuff in it. I sent reply to my Twitter post. Thank you, Vince. Let me look. I can pull it up real quick. But while I'm doing while I'm waiting for it to load, let's find us a have the 9 volt battery. We have a we have a stepper driver. How's that for a stepper driver, huh? We have some alligator clips, which we will need. And what else is there in here that we want to play with? 
Got a fan. Play with a fan. <sighs> nope, I think that's it. So what we can do is put that away. Put that honking battery away. Log in to Twitter. The Twitters. The Twitters. I'm gonna turn this camera up a little bit. Right. Okay, hopefully that is that good enough? Because if it's not, I can just prop it up just a tiny bit. How's that? Better? So I need... Really? Oh, there it is. This is the one thing I meant to grab, is the extra battery. Because I don't like opening up my batteries if I don't have to. I be, in my head, it, I'm convinced it keeps them fresh. More garbage. I have got to clean this place. Maybe I'll live stream us cleaning. That would be kind of neat. Now, there is a correct way to do this. I believe there is a positive side and a negative side. So, I'm going to have to look at that. Not the battery. I'm not referring to that. So I'm going to swap these. I'm going to use red as my positive. Have you seen my video on mini spool? For a yes, I did. It was a really good video, actually. All right. So, 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 so. <clears throat> this actually has wires in the very middle here. I think it's just for the purpose of... Uh, Splicing it to another string, but I have other plans for this. Well, first off, my first plan would be to actually be able to strip this because that would be pretty awesome if I could. All right, so I got just enough wire. Now I'm gonna take my black, which is my yellow here, and I'm gonna put that right here. Yeah. And then I'm going to take my red, which is my positive, and I'm going to, ooh, look at that. All right, so, yes, you can run these on 9-volt power supply, but they're not. Huh. Well, where did I leave off? Okay, so, yes, I did see your video, and I thought it was very done. see if I can go back to this again for a minute. Honestly, I'm only going to be on for another minute or so anyway, but I just wanted to show you that with a 9-volt battery, this does work. I'm curious, however, this one requires three because it's got a signal wire on it. So it's got power, Yeah, so this isn't going to work. So anyway, yeah, these are 12 volt, but it does work on a 9 volt battery. So that is just something you can keep in mind. <sighs> and I apologize for the stream interruption. That was very rude of my uh, phone to just decide not to work. I am curious, though, as to whether or not... I can get a signal on this thing. Oh my god. Oh, you know what? I have nippers. I can use those to get to what I want. Come on now. Get rid of that plastic coating. You don't want it there. You know you don't. All right, wonder if we can use too much. Yeah, these are not very big. I wonder if I can uh, apply voltage. 
Ooh, look at that. <laughs> and like, so I got green. And I got red. And I got blue. Ooh. I will say these are a lot brighter than the white ones with a 9 volt battery. But it does say this thing is supposed to be 5 volt. So that could be why. Probably putting too much voltage through it. But it doesn't look like it matters where I apply the voltage either. Oh, I can't get to it. Isn't that slick? Yeah, I'm on the next string down. That is cool. Dun, 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 dun. Dooch, dooch, dooch. So yes, yeah, so if you ever just want to just play with a battery and uh, some LED lights, this would definitely be the way to do it. Blue, red, green. Although the gator clips are a little bit too big for what I am doing, so. Let's see. So we've got, what else can we do? You know what? I know what we can do. I want to get off, but I'm having fun now, so. I have a white gator clip. I have a green gator clip. And I have, um, what else I got in here? We have a, uh, I don't know. I got an LED light. What does this run on? This thing runs on 12 volts. <laughs> Let's play with it. It doesn't say which one's positive and negative, though, so. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play with this one next, because we can. What does this one do? Does it do anything? Yeah. Backwards. Well, that don't work. Maybe it's not enough to light it up. Or it's broken. Since it's 24 volt, I mean, I think that I would get at least a little bit of uh, something. Just a little something. I got nothing. Nothing. That's a bummer. Epic fail. I have failed you. I'm sorry. All right, so let's try. The reason I'm procrastinating is because I want to. Holy cow. Yeah. Thank you for that. Letting me know about that. Because when the phone's not facing me, I can't see anything. So, you know what? I think we're done anyway. I was just dorking around with the these, which by the way is actually a lot of fun. So if you get a chance to play with LEDs and stuff, you should definitely do it because it's cool. Just don't blow up your battery. All right, so that's done. I'll put that in the pile with the rope LEDs. We need to get a container for that. And this is... still squishy so I'm gonna leave this alone for the night because I could probably I don't know let's see can we take this out we're gonna we're gonna try okay so if this goes horribly awry I apologize but all right let's uh, we have removed it and this thing is sopping ringing wet but it's out and it's not very pretty, but we get to look at it. See, there it is. That's the coaster. My workbench is going to be wet tomorrow. But I did it. So that's cool. I'm okay with that. The... 
mold has gunk in it. Um, I wasn't expecting a horribly clean return on this one because of the uh, issues I have. Because I forgot to... Uh, trim the extra flashing off the figure because there's just a little bit of flashing when I uh, had pulled the uh, mold earlier and I meant to bring my exacto knife because that's about the only thing sharp enough to cut this is uh, right around the edges of the ring there's some uh, just a little bit of like flashing where it there was like maybe a tiny bit of a surface on the inside of the um, the print on the 3d print so when I cast this it left just a little bit, which is where most of this powder is sticking to. So what it did is it kind of blew out the design a little bit on the uh, the coaster. But that's not really a big deal. Um, this is the first run. I'm just doing this to see if uh, the concept works and if this is too complicated of a design. Um, the surface looks good, though. I mean, so I'm actually really happy about that, so that's good. i got to go wash this mold off, though. And, yeah, before I crash again, you guys have a wonderful evening. And I hope that you got something out of this stream today in regards to concrete and playing with 3D printers and all the crazy things you could do with 3D printers and molding and casting and casting and really cheap really cheap stuff concrete this bucket was like 10 bucks and I could probably make like a couple hundred of these out of it we're gonna see so until next time you guys um, you know do what I always tell you to do you know just well don't do what I tell you to do that just sounds wrong that sounds horribly wrong Keep creating and innovating and not giving up on whatever dream you have, okay? Be like me. Always, always keep going. Maybe a little less water. Yeah, I know. If I had poured it when I would, like, when I had first made it, it would have been fine. But then I added some water to it because it started setting because I was gabbing. And I was like, oh, got to break it up because I let it set too long. You're supposed to keep it moving until you're done pouring it. And I stopped moving and left it sitting there and it started to set me the where the sand kind of just starts to close the gap between the particles and it gets really close and squishing the water out and then yeah that's where I was yeah and uh, so anyway you guys are awesome you rock thank you for everything and uh, like I said you know keep innovating and creating okay that is pretty much all I have to tell you today. So have a great evening and thanks for hanging out.